Hi, I'm Dave, owner of Future Past Vintage Collectibles. This is my daughter, Rachel, behind the camera. Say hi, Rachel. Hello. Today, we're in my workshop um, where I press and clean comic books and evaluate them. And I would like to demonstrate what people do when they're pressing and cleaning comics. This is by no means an instructional video. Uh, that's not the goal here is to teach people how. But I've learned that a lot of people really have no concept of, of exactly the work that takes place. So I want to show you what is happening to the book, and at least the way I do them. So you just have the context to build on. Uh, the first time I brought my brother in here, and he was in here with me for hours, he was shocked at some of the things that we were doing and the results we were getting. And he's been in the hobby for 40 years nonstop. So it was really nice for him to be able to watch somebody do this. I thought I shared the same kind of thing with you guys. So uh, just know right up front, I do not I do not press books for other people. I strictly do it for myself. I have 12 presses. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that process. We're going to look at books today. We're going to look at books I've already pressed, and we're going to prepare a book for the press. So real quick, we're going to show you what this space looks like, and then let's get started. So uh, I just want to go over real quick the types of tools I have and how, the, how this is all set up. This is um, called a tack iron, and I use this for getting out spine ticks and, and putting some heat on the paper prior to the press to help move things around. It's really an integral part of it. These are the papers that I use, and these are all different. This is like printing paper. It's a little thicker, um, and it's a little glossier. This one's a little heavier. I think it's a uh, 120. It's a little under cardstock, so it has some body to it. And I use this for a very particular um, use in books, and I'll show you that. And this is garden variety uh, magazine backing boards. Down here I have what's called uh, chamfered boards and small chamfered boards. And a chamfered board is just a thicker uh, style of board. And this one's really old, but it has this beveled edge here and I'll show you how I use that as well and this is even a smaller chamfer board that I use to get to the staple and uh, over here I have products and I have all different types of tools and I have a lot that's not on here this is actually ultraviolet light so I can look and you can even see a spot there this is how I can look for restoration I use these cotton pads I, I use tons of these uh, and I'll show you this is a steel ball that I use to get out certain types of bends in comics. These products right here I use a lot as absorbing. Uh, this is an absorbing sponge I use the most. And this is an absorbing product I use more like Play-Doh. Um, it's a little more dangerous. I, I've wrinkled books using this because uh, you have to really be mindful. This is a little better. And I have different types of erasers. I have five or six different types of erasers. And this, this whole surface right here is a cutting surface. Um, I don't cut very much, but when I do, it's nice to have this, and this is a workboard. And I have a secondary workboard over here, which is a stack of books I'm currently working on. And then over here, I have all these books that are in queue uh, for one reason or another. Um, and we'll talk about that in the next episode. The way I select books, I'll go through as I buy a collection. I take a first look at them and uh, do some down and dirty grading where it's not really exact, but I get an idea. Next is I'll start to individually go through them in software to see their value, uh, to see what they are in particular grades. The next piece would be to create a pick list of certain books. I can only work on so many books at once. And when I do work on books, I'll start to put books aside and it gets, it can get kind of sloppy. I mean, if I pull a hundred books, I might only press 30 of them or 20 of them or none of them. So the way I do that is I'll, once I get them here, I look at them. So I take them out and I see if they're a good candidate for a press and clean. So once I get it out and I have it out of the bag under the lights, I take a look at it. So let's do that. Now this book I looked at last night and um, it has one big fundamental problem, but a lot of really good stuff. So it's got a soft corner. It's got a bent corner. This I could get out, but I do think it did break the color. Um, I think it would, no, look, you pressed it, it I would think. look better if I pressed it. So you can see there's an indentation that runs all along here. And then you got a broken color here. We'll keep going up. All right. that, that's just a miscut. If that was the only thing wrong with the book, it would be fine. Um, as long as you never, ever would want to pull that off. Just leave it the way it is. And then keep going across the top. And this one is dirty and it looks like it's got a small bindery tear. You've got a color rub here. You've got 
it looks like a spine tick there and then something going on here i'd have to really get into it and look at it small small spine tick you have the edges of the staple have some wear on them from being red this white could be cleaned it would need to all be cleaned with an eraser um, continue to go down here's a longer spine tick thin but long and another longer spine tick it's, it's really well centered by the way this particular book keep going down staple looks good you have a couple spine ticks here and then you go along this edge I don't know if this is why I don't wear gloves yeah that that's not natural to the book color rub here and a little wear is it chipping or is it color rub no it's it, it's all there and then on this top part we already looked at the side I think um what were you saying about top? Yeah, there's, a little, there's something in the middle. Yeah, there's something going on here. Yeah, that's staining. I think I can get that off. It'd be very difficult because there's something going on right in the middle. So based on the front cover, what I'm seeing on this front cover, I would call this an 80 so far. And we haven't even looked at the main part of the cover. <laughs> yeah, so that. now let's get into this. So that right there is part of this. And the whole thing has, it looks like it, it could have been a subscription crease. But interesting it is. So I bet someone put it in their pocket like that. Somebody fold this, put it in their pocket. Because mm -hmm. the back cover, I could feel how it was folded. Right? <laughs> this is the part that broke color. Funny, and then that is connected to it. But mm -hmm. I could actually get this out. It's just and I, color I would have to, I would have to iron every page. Because you're going to see that in every page. Mm -hmm. And I've, I did, I ironed every page in a book last night. This is off-white pages too. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the back. Wow. So I, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's tell. This corner's a little bit bent, a little dirty. That's okay, though. As we go down, I get out of the light here. You can see there's an indentation right here. It's slight, and I could I could get that out. This is looks like food, but it's a stain. Keep going. There's more indentations here, small indentations. These could be minor tears. That is a minor tear. This corner's all kinds of jacked up. What I call corrupted. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can even see some of these these uh, dents like on the outside going through. And then and then you run around here and you still got issues all the way. Small ones. And not very visible. This is a really yeah, visible. Yeah, you can very clearly see yeah. that. But as you go up there, you've got really hard spine ticks. And even though I could I could remove some of these in terms of making them flat it would make the book look better it wouldn't improve the grade corner. yeah it's total back. total crunch so is this one so i i grade this very good plus <laughs> so i'm going to set this here let's find one that i'll actually work on so i wanted to get a good candidate to demonstrate cleaning a book um, with an eraser because i think there's a lot of misconceptions about how to use an eraser and if an eraser is always appropriate I can tell you I avoid them because you can damage a book with an eraser. Uh, but in this case, this book would benefit. So I thought I would just show how. So as you can see, this book is very dirty. And, and all that's required is uh, the skill to handle an eraser and also the time and patience it's going to take because this is not a fast job. So the first thing I would do is put my chamfered board under the cover. And I'm not going to go into grading this book, but this is a good uh, this is a good candidate for a press and clean because the things wrong with this book would improve the grade um, if I could remove them. So I think this ends up a high grade book, a 9.4 possibly, um, depending on some of the other bends in the book. It could be a 9.6. Second, I need to put this on a platform. What I'm using are acrylic sheets that I use for cold pressing and it gets the book off the table so I can get different angles on it. So these are the brand of erasers that I use. I also use other erasers. I use this professional drafting eraser, an art eraser, and I have others. This is a detail eraser, which I don't care for that much. Um, don't use it that much. So this is a magic eraser which I will use from time to time on really bad cases. Uh, this is a little more abrasive, so you have to be careful when using those. And obviously the cotton rounds are an essential part um, of doing this. So typically um, erasing is not the first thing I would do, by the way. I, I would go through and wipe it down. Um, next, I would use my absorbing pad, clean it off, wipe it down again, and this would be the third thing I do. But I don't have to go in that order, so let's try it like this. 
Make sure the chamfered board is snug um, against the book and keep in mind the pressure that I'm going to use on this book is so light. It's lighter than you would normally use with an eraser and unlike how people use erasers back and forth like that, typically when you're cleaning a book you're going one direction um, and you can change directions but going back and forth in that fashion is a, kind of a total no-no. There are ways that you can go back and forth on certain things, but I, I'll probably get into that because this book's so dirty. Let's go ahead and start. I want to show my eraser. This is a, I use this cardstock to get the dirt off this eraser. I used, to use, I used to use absorbing pads, but it would tear the pads up and it was too expensive. So you see how white the eraser is. So let's go ahead and very slowly, just going to glide this across. And I want to mention at this point that this you have to have patience to do this correctly. It's not about getting everything off at once. It really is about getting everything off evenly and going through the process because this takes time. All right, it looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. This is actually a really simple application. It just takes practice and feel. It's kind of like being a musician where you get a feel for it. And you, can, you know right away if something's wrong. Sometimes you might go across food or something and it, it will stop your eraser. And, and food, you want to be so careful on how you remove it because it can tear the book. Then I use different angles of the eraser so I'm not rubbing the eraser directly on the ink I'm rubbing it directly on the dirt. But still, still incredibly soft. I've put no pressure on this at all. I'm just literally dragging it at an even rate. Take a cotton. Not too hard because when, it, when I'm working with a champion board, it can actually bend the book um, in relation to this slope. And, and it's not always the same. So it's a bit abrupt. Let me go ahead and work on the bottom now. How much can this improve the grade of a book? Dramatically, it depends on what the book is um, and how much you can remove. If you can remove all of the dirt, uh, it, can tip, tip, it can knock a book off a half grade or a whole grade, depending on how dirty a book is. So that, that's just improving the grade just through cleaning. Um, but that's it's a hard thing to say. Um, but I've taken books that were under a 9.0 to a 9.8 before. A lot of it had to do with cleaning and then taking out wrinkles. this you can see the exact spot where you started cleaning it <laughs> that's night and day okay so let's go to this piece <laughs> so rachel had asked if i can just put a line through here and, and one thing i want to explain you see the dirt that is also on the colored section mm -hmm. so i cannot use an eraser i mean i could there's a way to use an eraser i tend not to it'll remove the ink it could so this is pretty embedded right here, and it's it, it's just uh, one picture. I think this is part of the picture, no different than that. Um, I don't think I'd hurt it too much, but I won't. I won't put the eraser on that. So what I'm going to do is just put a straight line right through here, showing the difference. I'm barely touching this book, and and that's the thing. If you know people want to go grab an eraser and some uh, cotton flats and start doing this. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but you should definitely know what you're doing or you're going to ruin a lot of books on the way. If I overdo with, with this, what happens is it leaves a gloss on the white that doesn't match the rest of the book. So if you were to look under it under bright lights and the light hits that, it, it, it glows differently. Yeah. So what you have to do, there's a way to fix it. You have to do every single square centimeter of the white to match it. <laughs> and it's just, it, it, and anyone who presses books knows that's so much work. You'd just rather not, you know, do it if you can. So I've just really worked on being as light as possible and it doesn't leave the marking. It doesn't look like it's been cleaned. Yeah, so I'll just use a cotton on that. See, I can still remove some of this. 
and you'll find that this removes dirt but it doesn't remove foxing and there's a lot of things that will not remove mold um, so understanding the difference between dirt or stains or foxing or mold is important because you shouldn't even try to attack those things this way if you don't know what it is that is oh wow so what, the way I'd follow that up is when I completed the whole book, then I would use this, and I would use this on the entire book. So you can actually damage a book with an absorbing um, by using it too much in one spot, because while it's very non-abrasive, it has some abrasive qualities. I've actually removed ink from a book and not removed a stain. So that's why it's important to understand what stains, you know, you're working on so there's dirt in here and that's what i would attack and i'm just barely touching the book again but wow you can already tell a huge it's difference it's picking it up and actually i think the cotton rounds do more work after this because when i say more they're more fundamental i could actually get oh, wait, it all wait off a second move your hand for a second look at all that dirt yes yeah, that's pure dirt yep. right there. so i i take the cotton round with more pressure um and, and really, it's okay to do it in one direction, but I prefer to cover every single centimeter over and over again to create an evenness. So that's coming up. You can see the it, dirt's coming so up. So much of it did. Yeah. And I have it before to show you guys. So th this is a good example of the type of book I like to work on because I can improve it. And sometimes I'll select books just because I know they can be a 9.6 or 9.8, even though they're not valuable. Uh, if they're more than 30, 35 years old. Yeah. It's worth, to me, to preserve that book and also get the best example of that book you can. So in this case, I don't think it could be a 9.8. We'll look at the front cover real quick just to look at how that dirt relates to the front. So I'll show you two, a couple spots that a lot of people tend to use erasers on. I won't use an eraser on these spots unless I have to. One is this insignia here. This can often be dirty. If it's not dirty, if it looks like I might be able to pull something up, but it won't make a difference to the book, I won't touch it. The other is this section here. A lot of people will use this fine, this one right here, and get in there. And I do find that um, I tend to avoid these unless I have to. You have some white space here. And another place that you could go is in here. Um, anything white on the cover. That's a basic on how I uh, use an eraser on a comic book. So I went ahead and cleaned the front and the back so we can show you uh, getting out spine ticks will be next using a tack iron. Um, and while we do that, we're going to hit some other parts of the book here. Fold that may not be color breaking. And there's another corner fold here that is not dirt um, that may not be color breaking. This needs to be sorted out. It's a little bit frayed. And then it's got a bit of a crunch corner. I think I can get most of that out. So. I want to really quick go to the front of the book and talk about what grade this book is before I take out the spine ticks. Front looks pretty good. I went through all of it. There's some spine ticks that you can see, but we're going to go through those uh, when I do the front cover spine ticks. The thing that stands out here is this color breaking, very, very small band. That eliminates anything higher than a 9.2 by itself. Right now, I think this book is an 8.5. Um, based on its defects. So let's do it. Let's take out some spine ticks. I'd like you to really get a good picture of what they look like before I do it. You got a spine tick, spine tick, spine tick, two spine ticks, okay, um, spine tick, spine tick, one, two, three, four in a row, spine tick, and then we have this pinched corner, short of a drop, but not by much. It's got a little bit of dirt there I can probably get off. Let's switch over this corner here just so you can get a good picture of it. Typically what I'll do on corners when they're bent like this, look at the inside and see if it broke the paper. If they get really loose and they break the paper, or the paper is just hanging on by a thread, it's not improvable. Okay, let's do the spine. So I'll put my chamfered board back in the comic to create a support. Um, at this point, I don't use any humidity. I just do it with my uh, tack iron and my silicone release paper. Everything here has to do with how, to, for me, how this board's lined up. So I get this at an angle. I can really get comfortable doing this. And I start to apply the heat. I'm barely touching the book. In about five seconds in each angle, is the way I do it. 
and really as as you really attack the spine ticks uh, the best way to do it is one at a time and watch it instead of just trying to do some arbitrary up and down the book and hope everything comes out i really pay attention to what i'm doing most effective way is by not moving the heat and keeping it in the same location long enough to loosen the paper up to go back to its muscle memory of the way it was let's take a look So this part looks great. This part, there's no spine ticks left and the corner looks much better. I can hit that corner one more time. There's, it's a bit, bit of a bulb there and I can work on that, but the corner looks great. So I'll just work on the very uh, edge of the spine here to flatten it out a little bit. Now let's look at it again. That looks great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's keep going up the book. actually moving this part to the middle of the tack iron where the heat element is to make sure that it gets plenty of heat where it was crunched. I may have to use a tool on it as well. One more time, just come down the book. And then we'll evaluate it and see if I need to work on individual spine ticks. Let's take a look. That corner looks a lot better. Yeah, so I'd like to start where we ended off. So. There's still a very slight spine tick here. Now, there's a little bit of, I don't know, it's just not completely flat right here. The press will take care of that. It, it, it's, it's where the curvature is, is that you really want to focus and remove the spine ticks because the heat press does not touch that part of the book. That does look better. I can continue to improve that. I'm actually going to use a different type of uh, tool. I'm going to use a different type of board. Um, I have a board that is only two inches across. It's much finer and flatter, and I like to use it for corners and staples. I'll also use a little bit of humidity on this. Watch how the paper shrinks if you can get up close. You might be able to see the effect. So, back to my first on release paper off this side. better let's use a tool so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat that piece up that is bent down and I'm going to use this flat leather working tool here and I'm applying moderate pressure right now then I'll put more heat on let's take this board out and see how it looks Better yet, now I'll take silicone release paper, put it right here and I'll go flat over the book with no board in it at all. So, it looks really good by the way. So now you just come through, you see the dirt that was there you couldn't see. And the press will flatten all of this out. So all you have now is a very small indentation it's a soft corner is what it is, but it's better than a crunch corner. So typically uh, this type of work, it would take 20 to 30 minutes. So I've already put about, what, 15 minutes into this book. So this is just a very time consuming way to do books, but it's also to me the only way to make sure that you've attacked everything that is diminishing the grade. It's pretty close to gone. Mm -hmm. I'll um, put another picture up of it, what it looked like before. Yeah, and then what I'll do is after I press, I'll look at it again. This is when I decide sometimes to press a book twice because if I get really close to the goal line, let's knock this out real quick. Cool. Rollerball is to see how fast it's going to come out. I know it's going to come out. I don't know if it's not color breaking yet. Circular motions, moderate. I'm not pressing very hard at all on this ball. Better. Still pretty bad, but better. Well, this is one that the press will help eliminate. Taking the chamfering board out, and I'm going to do a little something different. So whenever I open a book and do the inside, 
the key to that for me is to keep the book bent like this. So you don't want to hurt the spine, and you don't want to hurt any of the other work you did. Do the same thing to the inside. So a little bit of humidity here will help relax the paper. I'll do the same thing again. So whenever you prep a book, it's not it's not going to look like the final product. The press is really brings it all together. I'm going to use a different tool on it this time. As you progress on these, you use a little less heat, a little more pressure, repetition. If you want to get the most out of it, it's reducing it. Still there. You can still see the line right here, but it hasn't been pressed yet. So turn it back over and look at the outside again. And we'll do one more time, and then and then we'll let the press do the rest of the work. So what can happen is as you apply heat here, it can transfer the inner ink on the inside page to the board. In light amounts is not a big deal. You want to be careful on how much heat you use. Significant amount of pressure. And then this again. Okay, so when I press this, I'll obviously use more humidity here across the board. Um, and then let's do this corner here. So it has a small bend here that will come out and then this era of paper is pretty responsive here we go that will come out with the oh, press it's already better yeah I can still see it but like so we hit the spine ticks there let's go ahead and hit the spine ticks here so Let's, hit, let's look at the spine ticks in this book from the bottom up, and then we'll just start to attack it. There's a color-breaking spine tick. Color-breaking spine tick on the spine. Very small. Very small. Very small right here. Staple looks great. Color-breaking spine tick there. And a color-breaking spine tick there. So I think that's seven. Um, seven or eight. And the thing about these is the size. Uh, they're so thin and they're so um, shallow that you also need to look at a book like this in the right light so you can see the bends. So you can see the bend for that. You can see the bend for that. Let's keep going up the book. There's a bend there. There's a bit of a pressured bend there. It's a pretty big bend there. And then Looks like there's a pretty big bend right there. All of this I feel really confident in getting out. And then this is just, uh, it's a bit mangled. I think it's going to look so much better when I when it presses. This is really a good candidate for a press in terms of I, if it wasn't for this color break right here, I think this could be a 9-4 easily. This one for a So it's flat. This right here will require a tool. Yeah, there's a likelihood that it won't come out. It may not be worth the amount of work that would have to go into it. And I still don't think it ever gets out 100%. So it's not a big deal. I think a lot of people really focus on these indentations and all of these I think will come out. to the top isn't this with that area where there was a bump so now if I continue to work on that it's pretty sorted out right here that one stayed that one's color breaking so this will flatten out so there's that this one's really almost undetectable the very smallest of color breaks too so yeah it looks really good so the, the press itself will get all of this flat because it lays flat and I will have the pressure with the backing board behind the cover and the metal plate above it and with the amount of pressure 15 minute press I leave it in there to cool off for 24 hours it takes about four hours for a comic book to get back to room temperature let's do, this let's do this corner there's also I want you to see this there's a nail bend nail bend nail bend three different nail bends from the way that the book was held mm -hmm. Those are going to be harder to get out than that. Okay. Okay. So.
this will flatten out. I'll need to work on it a little bit more. Let's get one of these nail bins out real quick and we'll just stop looking at this and we'll look at some other stuff. Sometimes the heat alone will bring them out. And sometimes they require a lot of steel ball work. And that's front and back cover, just opening it up like I did before and doing the inside, doing the outside. Um, it all depends on the paper. Now, when it gets to a certain level, I can tell what the humidity in the press will do. This this needs more work. and that, So I'm, I'm going to stop working here, but give you guys some general ideas of how to use a steel ball, how to do a spine. This spine came out really nice. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this in the press. I've already prepped this book. One of the issues I'm having with this book is this right here. Uh, do you yeah, see them now? I see it now. This will, uh, I'm going to press it once and see what it does with some humidity. And then I might have to still ball this. I can get, I, I think I can get most of it out. It doesn't appear to break color. You really don't know until it's gone. This book has some great qualities though. Like most of this will come out and then I might have to hit this again. But I do think I can get all the spine ticks out of this book. Um, some books just take this. This is actually from printing the book and it's called a printer's crease. But I think all of this stuff will come out. I, I do think this is a very good 9-2 candidate. Um, it has a bindery tear on the top and bottom. Um, I think it'll have a hard time getting to a 9-4, but it's so white. Um, especially the outside covers are just so white. It, it presents so well. So anyway, let's put this in the press. I, I use different papers that I went over earlier, and I'm going to use magazine board to protect the spine. And you always do that, the center fold. Okay, so whenever you open the center of a book, by the way, always check the staples. Smell that. Yeah, I can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell it before you even opened it. It's so strong. This one's really strong. Okay. So then I get this 110 pound stock paper and do the covers. Then I get one more magazine board for the front cover. And I will put humidity on this book. So I'm waiting for the, the steam to be ready. And then I, I let it blow out for a minute. So it doesn't put any drops on the book. Holding the book in my hand with all the paper. I'll do the inside of the front cover lightly. Making sure it hits those indentations that I showed. Then I'll do the back cover. I'm holding the book very loose. Um, I've already explained I don't, why I don't wear gloves. Um, I really want to fill the book. Uh, but I do wash my hands thoroughly and I'm still very careful about the way I handle it. So this is perfect. I'm going to put the top on. And that's the stack. So this is what it looks like. And let's put it in the press. I'll put the top plate. I use plates to distribute the heat evenly throughout the book because the heating element in the platen is in the middle. So what I want to make sure of, a lot of people will just use magazine boards. They'll put a magazine board on top and bottom, three magazine boards actually, and then they'll turn the book and do both sides. I don't turn the book. No, that's a lot of work. The bottom, the bottom plate gets as hot as a top plate because of its proximity to the heat and that will do the bottom. So the temperature I'm going to do this is 165. I set the timer for 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes. Then I use different pressure for every book. And the goal with pressure, and this is important for people to know, see the heat creates a suction. So anytime the plate and touches it, it can move the plate and you have to really be careful. Um, I'll loosen it up a bit. Uh, very little pressure is necessary for this. You definitely don't want to pop staples or create creases. So it should be with the lightest hand, like, barely any energy at all. So now the timer's on and after 900 seconds, the alarm will go off. I'll turn this off and leave it in this press for 24 hours. Sometimes after three or four hours, I'll go in and make sure the boards didn't move around um, and, and remove them, either put them back where they're supposed to be or just take them out altogether and then let it finish. So we just took this book out. I put this in the press. It, it actually pressed for about 32 hours or so. Um, and what we're gonna do is show a before and after picture uh, but I'd like to go through it. What this is, is Thor 290, the first appearance of El Toro Rojo. So this book was in really poor condition. 
And what I decided to do is most of the things that I saw in it were improvable. I knew it would bring the grade up. This would not be a high grade book, but it would be a nicer, much nicer book than it was. So what I'd like to do is take a picture of the front and back cover and then you can just do a comparison. But I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. I'm still going to press it one more time. Um, there's a color break right here, but I can make this flatter and more, just more appealing. Still a little bit of dirt I can get off. I didn't put a lot of work into this because it was so low grade, but I am getting a good response. I can get more of this corner out. I can get these spine ticks removed. So I do think that this book was around a very good, and I think it will end up being a very fine. Um, which for a key, uh, it, now it's actually a book somebody might want. Not that they wouldn't want the other one, but the other one, as you can see in the picture, had problems that it doesn't have anymore. So this was an easy project for me. I probably worked 15 minutes on it. Um, and the book looks really nice in hand. It feels good. So yeah, cool. there, there's a, you know, kind of like how you can take a low grade book and make it mid grade, sometimes even high grade, depending on the color breaks on the book. I'm going to give away that Conan we were working on earlier in a future video. So if you want to win that, uh, just keep watching. Don't forget, uh, we have live sales on Instagram that we've only started recently and they're doing fantastic. I have a lot of books, as you can see. Um, some are pressed, some are not. Most are not, actually, but they've been doing fantastic. Make sure to check it out. We also have an eBay store. If you follow our eBay store, we do specials just for people who follow. And I'm really thinking about the channel when I do that. So you have an opportunity to get a book cheaper than I offer. And we also have a show coming up. So you might want to check that out if you're in the Portland, Oregon area. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. And hopefully this helps people understand what's happening to a book when it's being pressed. This isn't restoration. It really is just uh, um, fixing the smallest errors on a comic book, not using any foreign materials or adding anything to the book. But that's the end of the episode. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Rachel just popping in at the end here. I wanted to let you guys know that we went ahead and created an Amazon store with all of the things that my dad uses to press and clean his comics. Um, so I have that link down below if you're interested um, in pressing and cleaning yourself. I wanted to have like a space where you guys could, you know, see the products that we use and all that good kind of stuff. Um, so that's linked down below too. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Let us know if you like content like this. Um, we really enjoyed making it. So have a good one. Bye.